The Cygnus cargo ship headed to the International Space Station later tonight will deliver supplies for the crew and more science experiments, just as previous ones have done before. But this Cygnus will also be carrying a new all-in-one exercise device, which was prepared for flight in just about a year's time. Recently, my colleague, Brandy Dean spoke with Fernando Zumbato, the project manager for the Miniature Exercise Device 2, and she started by asking just how much smaller this miniature device is compared to the hardware on orbit right now. Give you a reference of what we have on orbit right now. ARED, the Advanced Resistive Exercise Device, wonderful piece of equipment, weighs several thousand pounds. It's about the size of a phone booth, a large phone booth. Um, and that's for what we'd use for strength training. Now for aerobic, or cardio, what we use is a treadmill, and it's similar to what you see in, in a gym. Now, the miniature exercise device is 65 pounds. Wow. And it's about the size of a large backpack, so you can actually take it in your car and drive away. That's a, that's a big change. It is a big change, in order of magnitude at least, and uh, size and volume. We're really pushing the engineering. So how did, you, um, how did you do that? How did you, how did you size it down like that? So unlike um, T2 and ARED, we use an electric motor that has a pulley attached to it, and the user pulls on that pulley. Now we can control the force that the user sees by controlling the torque on the motor. So that's something unique that hasn't been done yet, and it provides a lot of flexibility to make sure that we're providing what the crew needs for exercise, and you can change the load by just pushing a button. Um, okay. So it's very dynamic and very versatile. That sounds nifty. So uh, this is. is the... Uh, miniature exercise device too, right? Correct. That will be going up on the next Cygnus vehicle. Yeah, absolutely. And I assume that means there is a miniature exercise device one? It is. Uh, it was a proof of concept that we just had some spare parts in the lab and we put them together. And we actually had the Equinauts at C Test 2 try it out. So we just wanted to make sure that it was a capability that we could expand on. And they actually enjoyed it. They made some good comments and we incorporated those into the MED too. And Aqu um, Aquanauts on Sea Test 2, that's um, an underwater project to, to test out uh, some of the concepts for that we'd like to spend, send into space um, underwater. Um, yeah, off in the a, coast of Florida. In an environment similar to space that's not actually quite so hard to get to. Um, but how, how did that test out go? It went up well. Um, we realized that for what we had in the lab, it was a little underpowered. Um, it was a little noisy, so we wanted to bring that uh, noise level down. But we got some really good lessons learned from there. and. Now we're actually taking MED2, hopefully, to another NEMO mission to an underwater environment, so we can kind of compare the two in the same environment as well as comparing it to a space station. Okay. Well, if we've already got um, an exercise device or mm -hmm. a few that work on the space station, why is it important to miniaturize them? Very good question. Uh, if you go on a Mars transit, it's going to be a really long time period, and the crew actually lives in a much smaller volume that they do on space station. So having a big exercise device um, is not conducive because usually you still have more power, you usually still have more mass, and our current architecture you would need one for strength and one for cardio. Okay. So our device combines both into one. So it reduces mass, it reduces the volume that they need to use it, and so it's something that we would need to regardless. Okay. Yeah, I've seen the inside of, of Orion in the cockpit, and I don't think you can fit an ARED in there. So. No, certainly not. All right. But we, of course, want to, the crew to keep exercising. That's going to be important no matter where we go, but especially on long-duration missions. Yeah, just maintain the strength of their bones and their muscles. It's really important for the crew. So has it been an interesting project for you to work on? Yeah, it's, and it's been fantastic. Um, have a great engineering team and we've come across several challenges and just like any new engineering endeavor it's just the proof is in the pudding and we're actually very excited to see it on orbit. Okay. Well, I understand this kind of came about through an um, initiative here at, at Johnson Space Center called 5 by 2015. Can you tell us what that's about? Yeah, it's a really interesting initiative that started at the center level and at the space station uh, program level where they wanted to get some payloads flown into the space station um, within one calendar year, and they meant design, fabricate, and certified to fly. Wow, that's that's accelerated by Absolutely. quite a bit. Absolutely, and we're so um, concerned about safety, obviously, that some of the processes um, for payloads that are non-safety critical items were sometimes too extraneous. So we wanted to make sure that we tailored down up to the to the minimum things that were needed to maintain safety, and then improve the usability for research on the space station. Okay, and apparently it was a, a pretty good success. It was a great success. Um, they liked it so much that there's actually a new class. Um, they're called Project X, and, and 2016 has some really neat developments. I'm actually excited to see what they 
uh, provide okay, to so, Space Station. So are we. Yeah, we'll hope to hear more about those in the future. Me too. But in the meantime, we've got to get uh, the miniature exercise device 2 up to the Space Station mm -hmm. on Cygnus. Uh, what happens then? I assume it doesn't immediately replace ARED. No, actually, our goal is not to replace ARED. Again, it's just uh, an experiment that okay. we're doing. So first we're doing what we're calling like the engineering eval, the, the shake out of the system. We want to make sure that the device works appropriately, that the crew is comfortable with it. Once we accomplish that, that's when the fun starts, and that's when the research really begins. Uh, we're looking at the efficacy of the exercise, meaning that can the crew do their exercise appropriately, um, do get the loads that we need. And once we complete that, uh, we'll get some feedback from the crew look at what we can improve um, in the control algorithm of the motor, or sometimes we'll have to change our, gra our GUI, our graphical user interface, to okay. make it more friendly, and we'll go from there. So the, the future is really bright for MED2, and I'm really excited to see it. Do you expect to eventually send an MED3 up to the space station? or That would be a great goal. Um, Currently, we're providing both resistive and aerobic exercise. Okay. There's a new modality of uh, aerobic exercise, which is wrong, which currently doesn't exist in, on space station right now. So hopefully, if the crew like it so much, then we'll get the uh, gig for an MBD-3. Okay. Well, good luck with that. We Thank look you. forward to seeing it in action in space um, after it does arrive on Cygnus. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for joining us again. This was Fernando Zumbado, who's the project manager for the miniature exercise device.